Hello, it's Katie from What Katie Stitched here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to the first in a series of videos on starting projects with using Binker. Binker is a type of fabric that we can use for cross stitch. It is fairly sturdy, sturdy. it holds its shape, it can be cut down easily to size and this binker is on the larger scale it has it's called a six count binker which means it has six holes per inch of fabric and that means that the holes are fairly large so that you can use a bigger size needle and you can also use a thicker a thicker yarn or thread with it as well it's as I said, it's stiff, it holds its shape well, it's easy to cut down to size. You don't have to stick to rectangles or squares, you could cut it into a star, heart, whatever shape you fancied really. In terms of cutting it to size, I just take a sharp pair of scissors and you just cut through it pretty, pretty easily and then you're ready to go. So onto the thread. I like to use embroidery cotton or sometimes called embroidery silks or stranded cotton or floss. It's called stranded cotton because there are actually six strands, which hopefully you can see there, which make up the which make up the cotton. We're going to use all six strands for these projects, but in other kinds of cross stitch and embroidery, you might split it down and use three, four, two, or even one strand depending on the kind of cross stitch or embroidery you're doing when you buy it, it comes in a skein like this they're normally eight meters long and i like to take it from the skein and wrap it around some cardboard either a little card holder like this or a piece of piece of card will do just the same job it's good to write down the brand and the number of the thread, which is the shade number, which just means that if you really like using it and you run out midway through a project, you can replace the thread easily when you buy the thread. The number of the shade is normally written on it like that. So in terms of cutting the, the thread ready to use. I would never cut, be tempted to cut too long a piece. I normally go from the tips of my fingers to my elbow as a rough guide and that just means that you'll be less likely to get knots when you're working hopefully. For threading your needle, or before we talk about threading your needle let's talk about the size of needles and the type of needles. You're looking for a needle that is not sharp. It will feel fairly sharp to the touch, but it needs to have a blunted end. These are tapestry needles. This one is a size 14, and this smaller one I think is an 18. So with tapestry needles, the higher the number, the smaller the needle will be. If you knit or crochet and you've ever had to sew your work up, this is the kind of needle that you would have used again because you need a blunt end for that so you don't split your threads when you're um, or wool when you're sewing up uh, so you might see them being sold as wool needles and they will be just as good for these kinds of projects you just need to make sure that your needle pulls through the holes in the fabric okay without leaving a large hole in the binker for threading a needle I like to just take my uh, my embroidery thread and wet the end of the thread slightly so that the threads stick together. I do that with a bit of spit and then it just enables me to pass the thread through the eye of the needle fairly easily. If you find that tricky, you can use a needle threader. Lots of different ones out on the market. This is probably the most common one that you see in um, in sewing kits and things like that. It's got a, a coin on the end, well, kind of a coin style on the end of it. It's got a very fine piece of metal wire, which you pass through the eye of the needle. You then take your thread 
you pass your thread through the needle threader and then you pull backwards with this kind because we're using all six strands of the thread they're not that robust and they can break quite easily so I like to pinch right at the end where the wire is attached to the the actual the metal handle and then pull backwards using that another kind of needle threader would be this one it's very similar in style the wire itself is slightly thicker probably a little bit more robust but the one that I like to use most really would be this one it's sometimes sold as a yarn threader it's solid metal all one piece it's got a bigger end for sewing with thicker yarn and wool and the smaller end which is ideal for this kind of size needle so again you'd pass the shank of the threader through the eye of your needle you take your thread and pass your thread through the hole and then pull backwards and your needle is threaded it's not completely necessary but when showing people how to sew with binka for the first time I like to suggest that they tie a knot in the end of their thread and it just helps you from stopping pulling your thread all the way through your work when you're starting off. So the last thing I'll show you in this video is how to get ready to start stitching. What I like to do is on the back of my work on what will be the back of my work I like to run my needle through some of the fabric so I haven't gone all the way through to the front I'm just catching some of the the warp or weft whichever one is the across one and then it just enables me to Pull my thread through the knot will stop it from sliding all the way through it won't show on the front but my thread is nicely secured so I'm not going to pull it out when I start sewing and then we just come to the front of our work ready to start sewing we'll save the stitches for another video thank you for watching